Hey everyone, Techni here with not necessarily a review today, but just trying to figure something out right here. I've been getting a whole lot of comments lately and been hearing a lot of people talk about saying that the GK61 with Gateron optical yellow switches is better or faster than the Apex Pro. So as you can see here, we have the GK61 and we have a bag of yellow optical switches. But the first thing I wanna squash here, or at least help you guys out with something, let's put this stuff aside, the switches I hear these are hard to get these days. I don't know, you can probably find them online. If I can find a link, I'll put it right down in the description with the boards. And while I say boards, as we have the GK61, right? 60% optical switch. This one's by HK Gaming. But don't get locked in right there, right? If you can't find that, you can also get the SK61. I forget who this is by, Epo Maker or something like that. Now these just have a die sub keycaps not shine through. But the other option you also have is the Keymove DK61, right? Same thing, 60% optical. You also have the Aseni one right here. Same thing, optical. And the one I just recently found is the DK61 by Diraya. Remember the diarrhea back in the days, you know what I mean? But this is more updated. They hit the old DK61 pretty much just like this. This is a little updated, a little more firmer. The case is definitely more solid and a little more rugged right there. But the catch right here, what I'm trying to get at is all of these boards are 100% the exact same. Minus again, keycaps or something like that, but keyboard itself, the use of it and the function of it, they're the same. One might have a different software or something or come with some extra keycaps like this guy. Again, out of all of them, the one I really like is this Diraya DK61. It just has the updated case. It feels a lot solid. It's matte black through the entire thing. As you look on these other ones over here, you can see it has that rounded edge with that real shiny plastic. And they just feel a little lighter, just a little bit cheaper. I mean, all of them are plastic. But again, when you look at these four others over here, the case, the style of the case, 100% the exact same. Again, when you get into Die Ride DK61, it starts feeling a little bit more premium, but heck, all of these are budget 60% keyboards. So again, that was my only reason for showing you that right there, is you don't have to be locked into the DK or GK61. So many 61s, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put all these aside right here. I will have the link for all these down below, and I actually reviewed them as well. So if you wanna check out my channel, you can actually check those out as well. This is the one we're gonna, no, that's not the one. See, I'm getting confused they're all look the stinking same right here all right so we are going to use the diaria dk61 but again take this the exact same way as the gk61 good night i'm confusing myself all right so first thing i want to do right here is talk about switches again we got it out of the way that the boards are the same they're all optical budget uh gaming keyboards right they're 60 percent right so anyways the talk out there is people are saying that this option or this configuration right here optical 60 percent keyboard with the uh, gateron optical yellow switches is faster than the steel series apex pro so what i want to do first right now is throw up some numbers up on the screen and we can look over them kind of chat about them a little bit and then i want to come back with you and then we're kind of kind of kind of sum it all up right there and conclude our thoughts on this combo all right so as you can see on the screen right here we have total force the response the actuation and then the total travel now again when you look at the numbers this is kind of where you sum it up Let, let's look at the numbers that you probably spot right off the bat right as the actuation with the optical switches being one millimeter right there steel series by the way 0.4 to 3.6 because we all know you can adjust the omni point switches right so right away, right there, just look at that, 0.4 to 1.0. So right there, initially, yeah, the Steel Series Omni Point switches are faster. Again, you can compare it to a basic traditional switch, and I didn't compare this to like a red or a brown or blue. These are actually cherry silver. So again, we're kind of still in the same class right here, you know what I mean? And traditional being at 1.2. So both of them are clearly faster than a, a standard switch, not by a whole bunch, right? The other thing you want to look at here is total travel. Optical being 3.2, Steel Series being 3.6, traditional, traditional 3.4 right there. So you combine those, the uh, actuation with your total travel. Total travel is going to be whenever that key is going to bottom out right there. The optical is going to bottom out quicker. The other thing that you might want to look at, which is something I don't really think we need to look at too closely, you know, because it's so minute whenever you're gaming right there. You have optical at 0.2 milliseconds, Steel Series 0.7 milliseconds on our response time here. And traditional, I couldn't find anything too solid on us. I only found this off Steel Series site is 5.0 uh, milliseconds for response right there. 
And that is as far as, again, an optical switch. Bam, it goes down, hits that little uh, red light, and then it goes right there. With a traditional switch, it's gotta go down, and it hits it, hits the metal connectors, goes over there, and then actuates, you know what I mean? So again, yeah, optical, whether that be razor switches, the Omni points, which go down to the magnets down there and activate, you're gonna reduce some of that right there. Is that noticeable, number one? Uh, not really at all, like, at all. Isn't it like millisecond is like, uh, what millisecond is 1000 milliseconds per second. If I'm thinking right, I could be completely wrong right there, but 1000 milliseconds per second. So just think about a second, for instance, right? It's like, bam, I mean, it's quick, right? So think about 0.2 or think about five milliseconds even. That does not take a while, right? That is so stinking minute right there. The other number that you might wanna focus on a little bit more is the force. Talking about the optical yellows, I think this is also with optical clears, if, if I'm not mistaken, or silvers, is 35 grams of force. Steel series 45, traditional 45 as well. You can get into some other Gateron switches, which I believe are right around 40, even some Kales. But anyways, talking about the optical yellows at 35. So now whenever we take all those numbers and compile it, and again, you can look back at that right there, which keyboard is the fastest? It's the Steel Series. You gotta take other numbers with the optical yellow switches and kind of compile it into a group to make it the fastest, if that makes sense. Again, you're taking uh, the total travel and the weight, again, that's only gonna be if you're taking it and you're bottoming it out. I know a lot of pros that use the Apex Pro, they do, what, what do they call, like a hover press or just a light press and they don't bottom out to switch. It's just basically just barely pressing it right. It doesn't bottom out. That's where the Apex Pro comes into play if you play like that, you know, you're not bottoming your key out, you're just barely pressing it, bam, you're gonna get that 0.4 millimeters right there, which is incredibly fast. But again, with the optical yellows, are they fast? Hands down, yes, they're very fast, you know? But again, you gotta compile all those numbers up to make it a fast switch, rather than with the Apex Pro, they do have the quickest actuation. Again, if you're taking that response time, you know, the, the 0.7 or 0.2, like, I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to tell that 0 0.7 to 0 0.2, you are not, you know? The biggest difference that you're gonna be able to tell right here is again, probably the force, the 35 grams to the 45. 45 is incredibly light. I used the Apex 7 as my daily keyboard most of the time, you know, I also use uh, Maya Pro, but that's the biggest thing you're gonna notice is that 35 grams right there. 45 is not heavy at all, 45 is just, Perfect, actually, let me tell you what, on 35, great for gaming, but again, you gotta keep your fingers up, right? You gotta kinda like force your fingers to stay up, because if you just rest them on there, it's gonna press it down, with that short actuation, it's gonna press it. So again, that kinda goes right back to where we talk about, is it faster, right? Because again, bam, you press it and it goes right there, but if you're bottoming it out, you put all the other numbers back together, it's like, all right, so you're picking this here and then picking that there. Like, I'm sure you're getting confused because I'm confused myself here, you know what I mean? All right, so what I'm gonna do real quick here is swap into these yellows into the DK61. I have blacks in here currently. By the way, the blacks feel fantastic. But anyways, I'm gonna swap the yellows in here, go play some games, and I'll be right back with you and let you know the experience. Do I notice an improvement or not? So let's go ahead and talk conclusion right here. Doing some gameplay and everything. I play a lot of Call of Duty and a lot of Rogue Company lately. And let's talk about these yellows. Number one, the biggest thing, like I stated earlier, is that 35 grams of force to, uh, again, press the switch. It is incredibly lightweight. I've used Gateron Clear mechanical switches before, and again, I had to take them out of the board instantly. I went back to basic 45 grams. Now, right here, comparing, I got a couple blacks left on this board. Comparing to blacks, which are 50, compared to 35, I mean, it is night and day, like you can clearly feel it. But again, that's where I put it, like the yellows, not even necessarily yellows, but 35 grams of force right there. It can be good for gaming, I guess, depending on person. But again, horrible for typing. I mean, you're gonna have typos all over the place right there. Again, with them being so light, you barely bump the switch and it's gonna go off. So sure, it can be good for gaming, but for me, again, it's uncomfortable for gaming because I almost gotta put a little, it sound like a lazy bum, right? But I gotta put a little bit of uh, muscle and keep my fingers off of the keys. I can't just set them there and bam, be ready for that next press. So I catch myself, keep my fingers elevated off the, off the keys a little bit. Again, is that just me? 
Probably, but again, just kind of think about that. If you're like me and you keep your fingers on your switches, bam, and right at it, there can be some mispresses in there, you know what I mean? So all in all, kind of summing up the number one question here, is this combination, the GK61, DK61, SK61, whatever, with Gateron optical yellow switches, is it the fastest keyboard right now? I'm still gonna give it to the SteelSeries Apex Pro, and that's gonna be an argument for the comment section. I know a lot of people are gonna go crazy about it, you know what I mean? But again, you gotta take that most important number. The number one most important number is that actuation, right? SteelSeries being at 0.4, Gateron Optical Yellows being at one. You're talking, if you wanna throw in that millisecond response time right there, that is so stinking minute, and I'm sorry, pro or not, you're not gonna be able to tell that difference there. As far as the bottoming out, these guys being at, uh, what is it, 3.2, I'm looking at some notes right here, 3.2 compared to 3.6, again, minute, and the biggest thing about it, even with this board compared to the Steel Series, is again, doing those float presses right there so you're not bottomed out. If you want it to be quicker, heck, if you want your current keyboard to be quicker with that bottom out, throw some O-rings on it, and you're gonna reduce it, you know what I mean? Whether that be the Apex Pro or Something with basic Cherry MX Reds. Throw some O-rings on it. It's going to reduce that bottom out for you there. But it does feel funky when you type on it. Not mushy. It's just, again, shorter. So, again, that's what I want you to do right here. Compile the numbers. Go back right there. And you can piece them together how you want. But, yes, the Apex Pro is still the fastest because it has a 0.4 actuation point. Where that is going to register if you're building or moving or whatever, that's when it's going to actuate. It's so minute compared to both of them right there. And that's pretty much where this sits right here. It's a fantastic budget option. Any of the boards I mentioned, right? And if you can find the yellows, it's a fantastic budget keyboard, fast keyboard, if that's what you're looking for, right? Not everyone can hawk out 200 bucks or whatever it is for the Apex Pro. And that's where this sits right here. It's a fantastic, fast budget gaming keyboard so wait let me know down in the comments what you think about this combination right there when you look at the numbers are you going to say this one's the fastest or are you with me still saying okay the apex pro has the fastest actuation again we can debate it right down below right there um again using them both you gotta have both of them in your hands and you can clearly uh feel the difference right there not comparing board to board again we're kind of talking switch and actually using the switch right there but please let me know down in the comments i'm sure this is going to spike up a conversation i think this has gone uh blown way out out of proportion online saying that this is like the new best thing um again just look at the numbers and you can kind of see what we have there but hey thank you so much for stopping by and watching this project or test right here again i've been getting so many comments on it now i can just link this video to them you know what i mean but hey i hope i was able to help you out with this right here if you're wondering about it and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos hey i hope i catch you in the next one bye now